Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. I really appreciate you all joining this webinar from your busy schedule. I am Gautam Jha. I am working with Swiss from the last one and a half decades. And on this webinar, I am going to showcase and explain some of the awesome capabilities of Workshop Certify to work with MS Excel, that is one of the MS Office application. How can we use MS Excel automation with Workshop Certify? And now when we say why to automate MS Excel, so that means many different things. So for example, if you need to format any column in the Excel, okay, if you need to increase the width of any column in Excel, if you need to change the font size of any column, okay, then how do you do that? At the same time, if you need to select any range of columns in Excel and you need to copy the value from there and you need to use it in some other application for any other purpose, then how do you select the range of Excels? How to import and export data from Excel to certify record set or to some external file? How do we do that? So we will be seeing all those things. I will just show a small demo which will showcase each and everything. And before we do anything in, in certify with MS Excel, so you must be knowing that for any ap application, MS Excel just treat it as the application for now. So MS Excel is just an application which we are going to automate in certify. So for any, any application, be it MS Excel, SAP, or any web applications, first you need the application and its version, right? So similarly here also, you will be doing that. Now, how do you do that? Because in SAP, you know how to run the map, you do the live touch, and then live touch, you do everything. You, it creates your windows, it creates the objects and all. In web, you either do the touch learn or you live touch. Again, it will create the window and, and the object. But in Excel, we do not do the live touch. We do not do the touch learn. Then how do we create the window? How do we create the objects? Now, when we talk about objects in the real-time applications like SAP or any web application, like Salesforce or anything, you know what the object is. Suppose I need to enter a customer, so I know there is a field which is mentioning the label as customer, so I know I need to enter the customer here. But in Excel, you have multiple cells, multiple rows, right? So how do you light touch it? So we cannot do that. So I will tell you how to handle those objects, how to go to any cell where I need to go. If, if I have 100 row and I need to select the row number 50, column number 10, so how do we do that? So those things I will be explaining. So this is the agenda basically for today's webinar. So first we will see what is application version and how to create it and how do we import maps here. After that, we will be talking about the certify actions. What are the actions available in certify which we can use in MS Excel? So like format cell is one of the actions. So how do we do that? Selecting a range of cells is again another action. How, how to do that? So these are the actions. Then using jet keys. So what is jet keys? We'll understand how we can use jet keys in Excel. We'll we'll see that, and then it will be there. There 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 will be a demo where we will be doing something in the real time Excel with a certify. So that also we'll see. So first let's see about importing maps. Okay. So if you see if you see this this is screen here. Okay. So this is just as you thought. I will show you it in a real time also in certify how to how to create a application version and how to import the maps. For just just for example, if you see, this is the file. This is the screen basically, or this is a place in certify from where we import the maps of MS Office. Okay. MS Excel is not alone in certify. It comes with the entire MS Office application suite, which includes Outlook, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, and Microsoft Excel. So there are four things which are which are there. So you cannot alone take Excel. You cannot ignore Outlook and all. So if you can automate Excel, similarly, you can automate PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook also. Okay. So if you see here the interface, it says Office, MS Office. Okay. And this is basically the import schema, the map basically for the Excel. And this is the extensions for the map file. So if you know, if you have done any import for SAP or for any other application, so you know there is a file created with some extension MAP. So here it is basically MAP is there if you see in the last, but before that if you see it is MSO, right? MS Office. So it says it is MS Office extensions. Okay, and then 
where is the map located in your local system? The certify is installed in your local system, but where is the map? So this is the place where the map is located. Now you will tell how can I find this this map file in my system? So if your system is having certify installed, then this map file is already with you. Whenever anybody inst installs certify, so this map file automatically gets placed in a defined place. Right? This is the place wherever you have installed MS of wherever you have installed certify so that default installation path you will have this ms office map located so i will show you how, how to go there and then if you see this path is having one map file here this office automation map okay so this is one map file so if this location is having multiple map file suppose you are keeping this map file in a place where there are multiple map files one for SAP, one for some different application, one for some another application. So you will see a list of map files here from the given path or given location. Now it is up to you which map file you want to import. So here we are going to import the map file for MS Office. So we will be selecting map file, map file for MS Office. If you see this map file for MS Office is selected and then you just say OK, so it will get imported. Okay, once it gets imported, you can see MS Office the application which we created the version so basically we call it application version and then you can see the entire office automation window this is the entire ms office application suite and inside that you can see excel outlook powerpoint and word so these are all that is getting created on its own so we are not doing anything we are not doing anything technically here to create in these these objects these windows it is you just need to do the import and everything will get created so that is the beauty of certify you do not need to learn or do anything to recognize any of the Excel objects. OK, then in the next. Thing we will see what are the certify actions that we can perform on Excel. If you see, I have just taken a screenshot from certify, which will tell you about all the actions that are available. So what are the actions like add seed? Now suppose you have an existing Excel workbook, OK, or you created a new Excel workbook from certify. So either you can use a new workbook which can be created from certify at runtime or if you have any existing workbook if you want to do any kind of work there so you can open that from certify so in both the cases you can add a seat in excel so the action is add seat so how you add a seat manually you just click on the plus icon in the excel and then it new sheets get created with the default name like if the seat one is the one then the seat two seat three and so on and so forth will be there so you can rename the seat also. If I created a new seat and I want to name it with some proper naming, so we can do that also. Clear cell, if I have some value in any of the given cell, I want to delete it, erase it, or clear it. Clear it, deleting or erasing the value from the from its position. So if you want to do that, so you can use clear cell. Close workbook. Once you are done, if you want to close the workbook, you can close workbook. Execute method, if you want to invoke any method from Excel, you can do that. Find, if you want to find anything in the Excel, then you can find. So there are there are a list of actions like find column, find row, find row advanced. So find row and find row advanced. If you guys have worked with HTML table, so these are similar. Find row advanced to work on a row where you give some value to find. So now how it is? So I have a row. OK, that row can have multiple values. That row can have multiple columns. I want to find a row based on some value which belongs to any given column. So suppose I have a row and a column says first name and there is a multiple other column. OK, and there are multiple other rows. So I want to find a row where column first name is Gautam, right? So it will find that. But find row is basically not dedicated to any column. So I want to find Gautam, no matter whether it is on the first row, second row, last row, where it is. So I just want to find Gotham. So whether it can be on the column first name, it can be column, it can be on the column last name, or in any other column. So wherever it finds that given name, it will give, return you the row number. Now the question might be there that what if I have multiple such names, right? If I am finding Gotham, and what if there are multiple Gothams on the Excel? So then certify will return you the first occurrence of Gotham, the first row number where it finds Gotham. An input into cell is basically to entering any value into any cell, depending upon which row number on which column. So you give two parameters here. 
row number and column number, and then it will enter the value there. We have new workbook. If you want to create a new workbook, so you can do that. Open workbook, as I said, open any existing workbook. Remove seat, it will delete any existing seat from the workbook. Save workbook, it will save the work. If you have made any changes, so it will save. Select cell, it will select any cell. Again, you need to give the row number and column name. Column number, basically in Excel, we have column name like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you need to give that name. Select a range where you can select a given range of columns. Select seat, any seat. If you want to select, you can select it. And set property. If you want to set the property for anything, you can do that. Store cell. If you want to store any value from a cell, again, it is one of the important thing. So suppose in my in, in my Excel, I have one value, I have one material, I have one customer, I have one invoice number, anything. I want to store it. I want to store it in a certify variable so that I can use it further. So you can use the store cell. The store column. The store column will give you the column name where it is, where the given value is located. The store property. Property of the cell which you are going to store like inner text outer text those kind of properties store range so if you see select range select range will, will select the range like you manually select and store range will be storing the range in certify value certify variable so you give the range and it then it will store it in a certify variable store row it will store the row number Type key is just like input. Input is basically inputting entire text at once. A type key is just like typing it in the given cell. Verify cell. If you want to verify some of the values from any Excel Excel column, so you can do that. Same for verify column. Same for verify property. Verify range and verify row. All are basically verify, just opposite to store. And then we will be seeing what is Z keys. The Z keys are basically the hot keys. So. If you know if you are aware what is hotkeys, so you must be able to relate it. So you use jet keys as an action and then you give the target window where you want you, where you want to perform the jet keys that window caption that is optional though, but it is always good that you always give the caption here. Okay. And then the jet keys which you want to pass. And then the wait second wait, wait time means if you want to wait after performing the jet keys, so you can give some wait time here. So now let's see that. First, let's see how to import the map. So this is 35 and let me go to application. Let me create here some, some application. So I'm just creating some MSO demo. OK. One of the application. Version, so as you know, I give 1.0. If you want to share it, you can select it, otherwise you can leave it unchecked, unchecked, leave it unchecked, so it will not be said by any other people. Now, if you, if you, because this, this is something which you always do, so here you need to select the interface. So interface is office, and then you are done. Okay. So now, if you see this Excel demo is created here. Yes, this is created MSO demo, right? See, now if you see the application version, it is blank. Nothing is there, right? Now, how to get the windows here? So for that, you just do a right click and say import maps. Now, if you see, you are getting the same screen which I showed you in the PPT. If you remember this PPT, this PPT, so this screen you are getting now, okay? So now, since this application version is created with MS Office interface, so by default you can see MS Office. Here you will not see anything. Now, say for example, I have this application version created where I have used some other application also, like uh, suppose I used SAP also, and I said, okay, one application version may contain multiple applications or multiple interfaces. In that case, if I say import maps, then you have this option whether you want to import map for Office or SAP. Right, but since we are doing it for MS Office, so better not to include any other applications here because for that you will have a different applications already. So do not include any other applications here, otherwise it will lead to some confusions also. OK, so now we are here to import the map for MS Office. Now import directory. 
So as I said, if you have certify installed in your system, so you will already have this map file located in your system. How to do that? How to know? So just browse. Go to your certify installation directory, which, which is by default will be the C drive. If you have not changed the default path, OK? So C drive, you need to go to program files. You just locate the workshop folder here. In workshop folder, you will find certify folder. Just go to certify. Okay, go to interface client. Here you will find a WS test that is workshop test. Just go there and here you will find office. Office. Just select this file and say OK. Now see by default you can see this path, this map file in, in this path. OK, so we have not got this map file from any, any other source. It is there. You just need to install certify. If certify is there, this file is already there. Now what you need to do, you just select it. OK, if you have multiple map files here, so you can if and if you want to import everything that you can just select by this checkbox in the top one or else you can explicitly select whatever you want to import. Import options say full import. OK, and then say OK. Now see it is giving you this information that now it is going to import MS Office automation window, which will include Excel automation, Outlook, PowerPoint and Word. So do you want to keep it or you want to do anything here? Means do you want to delete something or if you want to remove something, you can do that. So I will just say keep all and I will say OK. Now if you see here. You got this. Office automation window. Inside that we have Excel. No object, see nothing, no object is here. Unlike if you see any other application, let me show you quickly to correlate. If you see SAP Fury, okay. If you see this window, we have so many objects here, right? Now here, if you see, we do not have any object. For Outlook, do not have any object. PowerPoint, do not have any object. No object. Now, how to use it? So now let's see that. So our map is imported. OK, and then you know that you need to link this map to your project. Then only you will be able to use it. So I hope you this is already known. So I'm not touching that topic. How to link the map through a, in a project. So hope that map is linked. So I'm not going to use this this particular application version, which is already because I just created it. Rather, I am going to use this application version. Let me show you that also. This one I'm going to use. This one, MS Office. If you see, it is, it is having the similar thing. It's a similar thing it is having. Excel, no object. Now see how to use it. So I have a process here. So what I'm doing here and how I'm going to do the demo. First, let me show you one one path. So this is one path here. OK, this is one file in my Excel in my in my local system MS Excel demo. If I open this file, you will see how this file looks. It is basically a plain empty file. If you see that there, there are two seats in this file. One is seat one and one is workshop. OK, and there is something called MS Excel demo. So just leave it. I'm just closing this file. Now what will have what this process will do? When we execute this one, it will first set a path. OK, this path you can either pass from record set. I'm not using any record set, but you know that that can be done very easily. And we are verifying whether this file in this path exists or not. What if I deleted this file? Then my automation will break, right? I don't want to break it. If this file is there, open this file and work here. If this file is not there, create a file and then work there, OK? So there is some condition written here. If the file exists, then just open it. OK. And if this file does not exist, create it. Now, how to add a seat? So if you see in this, this file, there is a seat called workshop. So it will remove the seat. So as I said, remove seat is a one action. So how to do that? Now before that, let me open a blank process to show you something. Now see here, if I select MS Office and Excel, so these are the Excel available here, right? 
all the actions which I showed you. Add sheet, clear cell, close workbook, execute method, find, find column. There are many actions here. So all you can use. You just means we just need to know what we are looking for. What is our goal? And then accordingly, we need to find the related action. So if I need to remove any seat from the file, I know remove seat is the action and it requires a parameter that is seat name. Now, if I say workshop and if the workshop seat is not available, so definitely this step is going to fail. So I will be having a failure here. Or if workshop is there, but I misspelled this one, again, it will fail, right? So those things is there. So this is case sensitive and we need to be careful. So seat is removed. So workshop seat, which is there, is not removed. Now we are adding a new seat, okay? With a seat name called certify. Then we are again adding a new seat called workshop. So workshop we removed, and again we are adding, and again we are removing certify. So what all we have, what all what all was existing seat, is removed here, and what all seat we added, we removed also. So we have seen both the thing. If that if I have to remove any existing seat, we can remove it. If I newly added some seat and I need to remove it, we can do that also. Then I'm inputting something. Okay, so what I'm inputting, so I'm doing input into row one, column one. Okay, and this is something which you can always pass through a variable if needed, right? Now what to input? So I'm just simply saying MS Excel demo. So this is my input text. Again, this can be a variable passed through record set or from some other application which you stored. After that, I'm selecting a range. Okay, if you see A1 to T1. So A1 means column A, row 1, to column T, row 1. It means I am selecting a range of columns. Okay. And then I am passing Z keys. Okay. So Z key is very important. So let me show you what is Z key. So I, I, I have opened Excel manually. Here. So if you see, these are the some of the functions here, right? You some of the menus are here. If I need to Suppose I have a text here, suppose a demo. Okay. I want to do, I want to make this text bold. So what I will do, I will select it and then I will click on this B. It will become bold, right? So how to do this in certify? So this is basically we need to see. So we need to select it first because manually this is where this is the how how we do it. Then from certify, you need to pass a jet keys. Now, what is jet keys? Just press an alt key from your keyboard manually. And then see some of the hotkeys are getting highlighted here. If you see, these are the hotkeys or hotkeys that are getting highlight, highlighted here. Okay. Now, if you see H, now try to understand this bold is basically in the home menu. If I go to insert, insert menu, this bold is not available, right? If I go to formulas, bold is not available. So bold is basically on the H menu. So what I will do, I will select the cell. I will press the Alt key to activate the hotkeys and press H. Now, once you press H, then all the functions available inside the home tab are getting highlighted. Now, see, one is for bold. So just press one and it is bold. So similarly, same thing we are going to pass in jet keys. How? Alt, H, O, and then one. Okay, it will be bold. So if you if you see now these steps, So as I said, we need to give the caption of the target window it means the whatever caption is there for the Excel where you are going to perform this, uh, these actions. It is always a good practice that you give the caption. Okay. Criteria, it is up to us how we can give the criteria, whether equals, contains, or starts with, ends with. And then this is the key. See, Alt key, I think it is known that this percentage symbol is basically the representative of alt key in, in certify. So alt key H M C. So here we are doing different things. So definitely the keys are different. Okay. But to make it bold, again, the same thing which I showed you just now. Then select range. So it will pass this jet keys. It will select the range. If you see the select range action here, so there are many parameters. So what is important here for any action which you are going to perform, just look or invest some time in understanding the parameter, what it requires. It says range example A1 for one cell, like one one. First row, AB for two column, right? 
So like that, you need to give the range. Then again, some jet keys. I'm seeing HFS. So again, what HFS will do? So if you see, select this one, Alt H F S. So it is going here, right? So it is basically increasing the font size. Now, if I type something, it will be typed there. And if I enter, it will be increasing the, this is the maximum range. But if I enter something here, so it will increase the font size, right? So same thing it is. So how it increases the font size? So you just enter the, and see, jet keys, you can pass a series of jet keys. Like if you see this one, Alt H F S. Now it does not make this font size bigger, right? Now I need to enter some font size here. Suppose I say 20, and then I need to press enter, right? So these are the actions apart from jet keys. So those things you can pass along with jet keys here. If you see here, H F S, and then if you go down, right? See 20, because already the focus is there, right? You just need to enter to 20. Okay, and then you need to press enter. So enter will be there. Enter. So the font size will be increased. Then you can save and you can close the workbook. Similarly, one more interesting example. If you need to increase the width of any cell, right? Now suppose I have some number here written like this. Just increase a bit. Now see, now if you see this one, if you select this one, you can get the full number, right? But if you come here, you can see this number. Now take a scenario where you have this number. Okay, This number is created in some other application. Say for example, in SAP, you got this number and this can be uh, just treat this some package number, delivery number or something. And then it created a report. It, it created this Excel file from there. And the requirement is that you need to verify this number in your Excel, whether this Excel shows this number or not. Now, when you come to Excel, it shows like this. So when you do verify, so you have this value, which you want to verify with this one, and the verification will fail. So for that, you need to increase the width of the column. So how to do, or you need to format the columns. So how to do that? Again, Alt key, H. Now see, what is format? Where is format? Okay. Alt, H, O, then format. Now here you can see a series of actions, a hotkeys, which can be used to format a cell. If you want to increase the width, so just press W. Now if I, if I say 30, the width is increased, but still the text is not proper. So I need to go to some other place. So what I will do, Alt, H, O. We have format cells, right? Then from here we can say, this is the, I will say just a text or something. To make the number proper. So these things we can do. So let me just run this one, okay. I will not run at all, means all the steps together. I will just go step by step so that I can also talk about what it is going to do. So first we set the path here. Okay. Now we are trying to verify whether the file exists or not. This file exists. We'll just see it will pass. Okay. Now it will open that file. File is open and we need to maximize it because we cannot work in this the, the, this size of file. So what we'll do, we have a weight here, so let's skip this weight. And then we have a maximize step to maximize the file, so it will maximize it. There are two files weight. So 
somehow this is getting maximized the chat window anyway. OK, now it says file is there, so we do not need to create the file, so it will jump from here. To file exists, so it will not execute these steps, which is basically there to create the file if the file is not there. Now see, we need to remove the workshop sheet. OK, the workshop sheet is there, so we will remove it. So you can see seat is removed. Now we are adding a seat called certify. Certify seat is added. Now we are adding a seat called workshop. It is added. Now we are again deleting the seat called certify. Deleted. Okay, now we are trying to input something in the row one, column one. That is dem MS Excel demo. So it enters. If you see the, it enters the value there. Now we are selecting something. What? A1 to T1 means A1 to T1 here. So we are selecting that many columns here. It is selected. If you see, it is selected. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to pass some Z keys. You see, now it is merged, it merged the cell and it, it is in center. Everything is in center. Again, we are selecting a range. Okay. And now we are trying to increase the font. See, font is also increased. And then we are saving it, and then we are closing it. Done. So this is one demo, a small one. Another usage of certify, which is again very important, is of MS, MS Excel is that if you need to do any import export. So sometimes what happens, we prepare the test data in Excel, okay, or we already have a Excel with all the data and we just filter the Excel to uh, filter the data which we need for our business process. And then we might create a new Excel from there, or we might need to export that data into the record set and all. Okay, so. How do we do that? If you see, there is one action called that is a system action in record set. Import record set from Excel. So there are two actions. Okay, one is import record set and one is import record set from Excel. So this is a new one. It is a quite old one. So now this one is having some unique features. If you see here, let's talk about both. Import record set, you need to give the record set name, layout, and all, you know, and the file, the source file, basically the source Excel file. So here we are not saying if my Excel is having multiple seats. So we are not talking about the seat. Which seat do we need to export or import, right? Whatever we are doing, import, export, they work together, means they work just like each other but opposite to each. Import will take the data from here and, and import, and export will take the data from there and put it here like that. Okay, so if that's why here we do not have the seats and all means what seat, we, if we have multiple seats, then which seat it will take, it will, by default it will take the seat number one, whatever seat is in the first position. But here you have the option, source file you said, and then you said seat name. Which seat you want to import or export, right? If you say export, again, you will have the similar kind of accents here also. So export. So again, if you see seat name, right? Import. Import means you have something and you want to take that data from there to certify. Export, you have something in certify, you want to take it from here and put it in Excel. So from Excel to certify or from certify to Excel. This is basically import and export. So here you will give the seat name and all. OK. Another important action here for ODVC. Right? ODVC here only, sorry, record set only. This is again very important. If you use this one, like SQL to record set. Right? So if Suppose, now what is this? It is again, here we do not need any Excel and all, but 
why it is important why i thought of bringing this sometimes what happens we get some sql queries in our projects because you know data is very very critical and we might face or we always face basically rather that some data issues are there due to which we are not trying to deliver how much was expected because the data given was not working or the data pre data prerequisites or test data management those things are not there so there are many things so sometimes what happens we might get some sql queries okay you need customer you need material you need this data you need that data so run this query you will get a plenty of data okay so maybe either you run the query or somebody will run the query and give you the excel or the data but if you run the query you can run it from here and you can get all the data in a record set and then from that record set you can get the data into excel you can work it around you can find the your right data and then accordingly you can work with those data okay so this is ms excel and let me quickly touch one more thing here because i mean ms office excel if you see here okay if uh, i show you something like in ms office if i talk about excel so ms office there are we, we know that there are four five applications which we commonly use word and powerpoint is something which we need to see means where we can use in automation and how but if you need to use we can definitely use but excel is something which is widely used okay along with excel ms outlook is widely used ms outlook you can use to generate the report and all okay if you need to create some document during the runtime and you need to send that document to somebody from outlook and all you can do that so these are some of the things which might be there which might not be there but one proper use case of ms outlook is that suppose in if you if salesforce salesforce is there means in salesforce we can create a case if you want to create a case then you will get a case number in an email okay that email should be registered suppose your email or my email is registered with that so i will get the case number in an email so we can use ms outlook for that to read the case number so if you see here if i go to ms outlook you will have all the outlook related actions like delete mail find mail forward email you can send emails so many things we can do it here similarly if we go to word now what is the usage of word now suppose we are taking screen captures every every time okay now at the end i want to paste all the screen captures in word document so we can do that so here again we have so many kind of actions here Similarly, for PowerPoint, what all actions we do in PowerPoint, what all things we can do in PowerPoint, we can do that. So, any questions, anybody? If there is any question, I will feel I, I will be happy to answer it or address it. Okay, so Suhana asked that, do we need to write any code in future? No, as we know that workshop 35 is a scriptless automation, codeless automation. So here also we do not need to write any code. No matter what kind of automation you are doing, we do not need to write any kind of coding. Okay. Sai Sisha, can you please elaborate MS Outlook? Yes. So MS Outlook, how you can do it is very simple. You create your MS Office application version, and then you select the object as Outlook. Now, if you need to send an email, you go and say send emails. Send a new mail item. OK. OK, then whom do you want to send? Give the email address if you have multiple recipient then you just separate it using semicolon if you want to copy somebody on that email you can put those emails in cc if you want to bcc somebody put those emails in bcc so address is done then subject what subject you want to give for your email give the subject attachment 
so here there are certain limitations in outlook if you do from outlook you can you might can means attach 10 15 files depending upon the size but here you can attach only two files okay so just browse that file from this path path button and you will have the file attached here you can set the importance or priority of the email by here. So default is normal. If you want to make your email high, select high, low, whatever. Body format. So if you want your email to be HTML format or plain text, you can do that. If it is HTML, say HTML. If you want unformatted, so just say unspecified. If you want uh, plain, you can say plain. Rich text, you can select accordingly. So basically, we prefer selecting HTML. And then the body means your mail email content. You, you can write it here. OK, so this is it looks very simple here, but how it works before you try to do that in your local system from where you are going to run this. OK, on that system, Outlook must be configured. Means you should have Outlook installed and configured. Now, if it is your personal email account, now suppose it is your personal email account that is configured in Outlook, or if it is your official email account configured in Outlook, so it will go there. If you go to the send item, you will find that email in your sent item. Okay, so generally we do not use our personal ID. So for such purposes in a project, we create some test IDs, some generic IDs, and we use that IDs to send emails through certify. We do not use our personal IDs. If test IDs and generic IDs are not possible, then we are we have no choice, so we can go with our personal IDs. What is the okay? Which uh, certify version we are using here? Here we are using certify 12. Okay, if you talk about the what is the patch of this version, so we are using certify 12. 2201.25. It is one of the latest version. I think after that, two, three more builds are released. Okay, so we are using that one. And uh, currently, nobody, nobody is using anything later than certified 12, because I think workshop has stopped the support for anything below certified 12. So you have no option, but you need to upgrade your certified to certified 12 to get a proper support if needed. Thank you everybody. Thank you for attending it. I hope it was informative.